Uh, one man who did see all of this coming, and that is former Council of Economic Advisors chairman and the Hoover Institute Distinguished Visiting Fellow, Kevin Hassett, is here. Kevin, great to see you. Thanks for joining the conversation. We're all Thanks, talking Maria. about inflation sure. this morning. What's your take on the PPI number, yesterday's CPI number at 9.1% and 117 today? Right. Well, you know, your conversation just now was really accurate and chilling, but I think you understated the bad news. And I want to actually uh, do just like a little bit of walking through how you should think about inflation so that people understand why. If you start in a car at zero and you accelerate, you know, 10 miles per hour per month, then after six months, you're going 60 miles per hour. After 12 months, you're going 120 miles per hour. And so what you care about is like, what's my velocity right now? And so by looking at these 12 month numbers, we're really, really hiding how big the increase in prices are that are affecting ordinary Americans by a very large amount. So, for example, in the latest CPI, if you look at the things that people actually buy every day, like you go to the store, you go to the gas pump, those over the last two months are up at an annual rate of 32 percent. If you look at inflation just over the last six months, uh, and then top line inflation of the CPI is 11 percent, not 9 percent. And, and so what happens is by going back 12 months, what we're doing is is we're taking that time when the car started out at zero and averaging it in with today. And that's why everybody keeps, especially the Biden administration, keeps getting the numbers completely wrong. Because if they talk about a 12-month average, that it's better for them because inflation is lower. But inflation is startlingly high right now. Think about it. The, the things that you actually discretionarily purchase that aren't durable, like you don't buy a car every day, right? You don't buy a house every day. The things that you buy every day are right now rising at a rate of 32 percent. And that's the headline. That's why America Americans are so upset, and that's why the Fed has probably got to lift rates by a whole uh, percentage point at the next meeting, and then they've got to continue at rates about that high if they want to get ahead of the curve, because we're going 120, we're not going 60 right now. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's what I've been saying. You see these headline numbers of 9.1%, of but then you look at the underlying components and you see a dozen eggs is up 37% year over year. The price of an airline right. ticket up 30% year over year. You know, fuel up a huge uh, double, more than double over the last year. So it sounds like you agree with the betting in the markets. Uh, there now is an 85% chance that the Fed raises rates by a full point later this month, Kevin, is that what you're believing now? Yeah, I, you know, I, I was thinking they would go three quarters of a point for the rest of the year, but because the Fed is not stupid and the Fed, you know, while they might be a little partisan, they're not partisan like the White House. And so they're looking at the numbers the way I just described it. They're seeing the acceleration and they're terrified. And so they're going to be moving yeah, maybe yeah. between meetings, because if these numbers don't turn around, then you're looking at runaway inflation, uh, hyperinflation, something we've never seen in the U.S. And so this is a very, very treacherous time in American economic policy. And the thing that is most disturbing is that the Biden administration and the Democrats are just in denial about it, rather than trying to describe right. what's going on and come up with policies to address it. Yeah, no, no pivot whatsoever. And that's interesting what you just said. We may see an inter, inter meeting move. In other words, between official meetings, maybe they come out in the middle of the month and raise rates. Is that what you just said? That's what I just said, because the, these numbers are that yeah. bad. Uh, these numbers are that bad. It, 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 it's almost irresponsible. You know, a, a Greenspan Fed would definitely hit people with a surprise, really big surprise, uh, because what happens is that yeah. when you hit the markets with a surprise, then the markets finally understand, OK, this is a Fed that's serious. And then expectations adjust. They say, well, whatever it takes, they're going to get ahead of the curve on inflation, even if it's eight, nine, 10 percent interest rates. And so therefore, I got to yeah, start to change point. my expectations. And then inflation starts to come down. But until the Fed does something really surprising, that I think that we haven't seen peak inflation. Now, the, the Biden administration did point out that gas prices have moderated in the last week or two, but that's a temporary phenomenon, and that's really not the cause of all of this. And so that's something that's going to go away by the end of the summer. Dagan. Kevin, just a couple of things. We're watching what's happening with the two-year yield on the, um, the Treasury there and then the 10-year yield. Yesterday, the two-year closed above the 10-year by a margin that we haven't seen since 2000, roughly around the fall of the year 2000, so almost 22 years ago. It's a classic sign 
of a recession, that that's what people are betting on. Like longer term, mm -hmm. they think rates, longer term rates are going to go lower because the U.S. enters a recession, uh, number one. Number two, to bring up you're talking about the Biden administration. Not only are they in denial, but what they've done even this year has made inflation worse. They, in April, Kevin, and my question, in April, they extended the moratorium on making student loan payments. That stimulus to the rich. 40% of student loan debt is in the hands of people who have law degrees and medical degrees. The, my question, are they going to do something equally, if not more stupid? Something that is stimulative, that is, rather than helping the Fed fight inflation, um, making it harder for them to do something. Yeah, well, first... Right, well First, you have to acknowledge a, the problem, Kevin. First, you have to acknowledge the problem, and they refuse to acknowledge what's going on with what everything Dagan is laying out. You're exactly right, both of you guys. It's a great question, Dagan. And the, the list of uh, stupid things that they're doing is really, really long. But one of the things that I'm working on a paper with Tim Fitzgerald, who worked with me at the White House right now on, is uh, you realize that oil production right now is a million barrels a day below where it was right at the start of the pandemic. A million barrels a day. There are a million barrels a day missing. And what we've been trying to do is, is look and see, like, well, why are they missing? And basically the bottom line headline of what our paper says is going to be that the Biden administration bureaucrats are making it impossible to expand production. And because of that, we're short a million barrels. And that adds to inflation right there. And so they're doing a million things to drive up prices. Their fiscal policies are driving up prices. And that's why we see inflation like we've never seen before. You see, but that's another lie from this administration, because Joe Biden came out just the other day and said, oh, they have all the leases they need. Why aren't they, why aren't they drilling more? Why aren't they doing more? He, he, he just over, right. you know, misses completely the fact that he's got all these executive orders making it harder for the industry to do what it wants to do. Right. And, and Maria, make no mistake, you know this is true. It was a few months ago when I said we're in recession right now. Uh, on your show. And we're really in recession right now. And the way to think about it is that you can pick your favorite measure of income, but incomes aren't keeping up with prices. Incomes are down about 4% of the first half of the year. So GDP should be down about 4% in the first half of the year. We're in a recession right now. Yeah, that's what I think as well. And we appreciate your knowledge and experience uh, to talk with us, talk us through it every, uh, every few weeks. Kevin, thanks very much. We will see you soon. Thanks very much for being thanks, here, Kevin Hassett.